So this is just going to be an idea that I've had for a long while, something I've been thinking about a lot, and me just kind of um, talking about it because I don't have the means to build it. Um, I have been thinking a lot about, I think I've mentioned this before, but a solar and wind-powered recycling machine. Um, it, the basic conceit is, is this. So uh, a typical extruder, if you don't know, I'm sure if you're watching this you know, but some people don't. Um, you basically have like a long corkscrew tube um, with heating elements. Uh, so you got like a little heat here. Um, oh yeah, we're getting all grade school with it. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, plastic gets shredded into little pellets. Uh, this is a milk jug, right, getting cut up um, and thrown into a big old hopper. And then it gets uh, sent down this tube by a giant corkscrew, like a big screw. Um, and the heating elements heat it up, and then what comes out the other end is recycled plastic, and you can do stuff with it. There's a little motor that drives the gear. Pretty simple. Um, the idea for my solar-powered one, or solar and wind-powered uh, recycler, was using a solar oven to get the either all of or most of the heat. Uh, there are solar ovens, uh, which if you haven't seen them, some of them are actually cylindrical shaped. Uh, so this would be a cross section. This is the side view. We got a tube, and that's actually where you put your food in. Um, and you can you can cook food in here. It'll reach like 400 degrees, which is what we need to recycle our HDP. I'm fairly confident that this can reach uh, temperatures uh, well above what we would actually need. Uh, now that actually might be like a problem. So we'll look at that in a second. But anyway, yeah, uh, heat radiates from the sun and it gets reflected uh, into the center tube by a big mirror dish. And my thinking is that you set up one of these tubes. So rather than having heating elements, you have a solar oven. And then you have a heat sensor. And the heat sensor, whenever the plastic or the chamber reaches the temperature you would need to, to extrude plastic, that's when the motor turns on, right? So it might only be running for like a few hours out of the day, but it would just sit there and in the sun, and then when it got hot enough, then it would turn on. And my hope, my thinking, is that um, as you're sending plastic through, it cools the machine off, right? Like you need to keep the heater on um, in order to keep the plastic flowing. So it, that would pro hopefully keep it from getting too hot. And I mean, you would need to, it probably would be a lot of work to make this like effortless. But my hope is that once you get everything figured out, you could literally just throw shredded plastic into a big old hopper. And then whenever this gets hot enough, um, from the Texas sun, you know, for me, um, it would just start extruding plastic and making parts for you. Um, now, what would you actually do? Uh, a lot of people ask, like, well, what actually we actually make? Because somebody, if somebody's not here, what's it going to be doing? Um, well, I would, I would actually use roller molds. Um, like, if you look up um, candy, uh, candy making videos, like if you look at those candy rollers uh, from ye olden days. Something like that. Now, it wouldn't be pretty parts, but if you're just making, like, a chain link part part that's just, like, an oval with, like, a line cut in it, that, I think, could be really easily roller molded. Uh, because if it was warped or whatnot, it, it still works. You're just making a chain, you know? It doesn't need to be uh, special or highly detailed or anything like that. Again, we're, we're trying to find uses for really crappy plastic. Um, I have big, I actually think that this could be built into a 3D printer, but we're not going to go into that right now. We're just being really simple. Or, at the very least, at the absolute least, um, you could cut this up. This, these uh, rollers would be replaced with a pelletizer. Basically, as the plastic comes out, it just gets chopped into little bits. Um, and that's what you would need. You can use that as a, a fresh plastic. Um, so this machine, if nothing else, could hopefully turn big shreds of plastic, uh, it will, into little bits. Although there's a problem with that. If you actually know this process, you may have already picked up on it, that the plastic needs to be shredded. Uh, that's where my crazy wind-powered idea comes in. So you get yourself a wind turbine, and then this is a manual one, right? 
Um, it's not an electric wind turbine. This is ye old fashioned like uh, windmill um, with gears and whatnot. You know, some some good modern day gearing. And you're gonna need a, like a lot of high gearing because wind isn't wind power isn't very strong, but it keeps or you know you know um, you might not have a lot of torque, right? Like this will spin really really fast. So we're gonna need gearing. You you need like gears down here in order to get like more torque. So this machine would spin very, very slowly, but with the right gears, hopefully you get like a lot more power. And this is running a shredder. Uh, these circles are supposed to be a shredder of some sort. So you would throw your milk jug in the top. Um, and now why would you do this? Like uh, uh, th this idea really throws a lot of people off. It's like, why do you, why not just hook it up to a motor? And Again, I, we're kind of going for a set it and forget it kind of vibe. Um, a lot of people uh, don't recycle because it's a lot of work. And I don't think people realize that shredding, even if you have a nice plastic shredder, is a lot of work. You have to keep your eye on it. Um, this, hopefully, would be something that you would have like a lot of high torque, um, but runs constantly, right? Um, see, here's the thing. A lot of, there are plastic shredders now. First of all, there aren't really a lot of plastic shredders. And, and this kind of throws people for a loop because they're like, oh, no, there's shredders all over the place. Like, yeah, kind of, but not really. Um, like, we have mulchers for lawn waste, but they don't really work on plastic. You can technically use a blender, but most people say that's a pretty painful process. Like, it works, but no one ever does it twice. Um, there's also... What other shredders out there? I don't know. Paper shredders. You saw my paper shredder. It works, but again, you have to babysit it. And also, my setup is incredibly dangerous. You can get credit card or CD shredders, but they're really, really expensive. And again, you have to feed it piece by piece, so you're still cutting up your milk jugs anyway. The hope here is that you could have a really big old shredder. And... My thinking with this, too, is that you could actually use old saw blades. Now, look. Old saw blades don't work, um, and and some people have built shredders with saw blades, and basically you need it to go really, really, really fast. Um, you basically need it to be a saw blade. A saw blade is designed to be a saw blade. My hope is that if it's going slow with a lot of torque, you could actually get some shredding going on. And even if it wasn't a lot, a lot even if it wasn't ideal, um, what would what could happen is the plastic see they put a little filter at the bottom and that loops the plastic back around again um, until it gets smaller so this has got like small so the only bits that will actually fall through are small enough to where what you would want and again that's why it, it takes so long to shred a lot of these a lot of plastic shredders that they're building now that actually are meant for plastic still have this problem of the plastic is too small because extruders don't work if this is too big this needs to be really really small like, look up any video of somebody trying to make their own, like, plastic, recycled plastic filament. It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare process, right? Uh, especially filament, because filament needs to be so precise. Um, but in order to extrude plastic, it really does need to be chopped up, like, really, really small. Um, so you either need a really intense shredder, or maybe one that just runs forever. <laughs> So yeah, the, my idea would, my, my hope is that, you know, with the wind blowing near all the time, um, even if this thing didn't shred very well, it would eventually get this stuff ground down. But I found out something recently that's really interesting, kind of why I want to talk about this, because I actually may have evolved past this big crazy idea. Anyway, just wanted to say it. And... That's it. I've been um, melting plastic lately, and I haven't been doing anything with it. Um, see, a lot of people, like, they take HTP, they pull it out of the oven, and it's a big hot mess. I call it the gel devil's chewing gum. It's really, really hot, and it'll burn you, and you're trying to knead it and work it so you get, like, a lot of the voids out of there, so you can turn into a solid piece of plastic. Also, you spread around that heat and also swirl the colors as well. Um, but I just put the plastic in there, and I heated it up, and <laughs> kept forgetting about it, right? Um, and like, I got it right here. Um, but eventually, I ended up with a big old 
block. And um, like a lot of good science, you know, when you forget about it, you make discoveries. Um, so I kept forgetting about it, but then I'd add more plastic and I'd like heat it up again. And I noticed that it was actually compacting itself. It looked as if it had kneaded itself. And I think what's happening is, is when you have a lump of plastic or you have like a, a bunch of bits and then it becomes a lump of plastic. So HDPE, um, especially if you're heating up to the temperature that it needs, right? Um, it likes to hold on to its heat. Um, it's, it's not like metal. See, metal radiates heat very, very quickly. It, it's very good at transferring heat. HDB holds on to it. It's, it's like an ice cube, right? Like, if you hold an ice cube in your hand, it's not going to freeze you immediately. But after a few seconds, you'll feel that cold, like, build up. Well, it's the same with uh, the plastic. When you see me handling it really, really fast, um, it's, I'm kind of playing hot potato. Or, actually, like a potato, yeah. Like a potato. You can pick it up and you can maybe move it from a plate to a plate without it burning you because you're moving quickly. Uh, don't do that. This will burn you because uh, it's very, very hot. But it holds on to its heat. It, it, it doesn't go away. Um, uh, <laughs> it takes a while for the heat to dissipate. But the outside does radiate its heat and will turn back into a solid plastic again. And what happens is you end up with a Prince Rupert drop of the outside plastic because this has a ton of shrinkage. And I think this is why this happens. It's because this plastic expands and contracts a ton. Um, it squeezes itself in. So without kneading it, it already, like, pushed down all of the voids. And something I have done with this plastic is... Um, when it was a big lump and the outside had sealed over, but I was still able to cut it with scissors, when you cut it in half, the center will ooze out like a tube of toothpaste. Um, and that's because it is shrinking and it's smashing that plastic on the inside. And after heating this up over and over again, I would add more plastic and I'd heat it up again. This has become... There is way more plastic in here. I mean, just listen to that. There's the thing. I'm not saying there's no voids in here. It's, uh, if I could cut it, um, which I probably could, but I, I'm going to try and CNC mill this. But, um, I think the voids would be minimalized. At least to a point where you, I, I think this is a usable block. Again, we're not going for perfection here. We're going for usable plastic. Um, I'm, I'm actually rather curious. Maybe we'll, maybe I'll, I'll be able to turn this into something soon. But I'm curious as to how... I mean, this is solid enough for me. I, I, I can make something out of this. Um, and, and voids can be dealt with. I mean, we get them in wood. You know, sometimes it happens. Um, so my thought. My thought was, now you would still need the, the wind-powered shredder, or a shredder of any sort. My thinking was you get another solar oven. Uh, not, not the tube kind. Or maybe the tube kind, I don't know. But... You just put the plastic bits out in the sun. You're going to need like a few reflective sheets um, reflecting the sun rays. Um, but you make a pretty standard oven. And you get enough mirrors so it hits about, you know, your 400 degrees or whatnot. And my thinking is that this would seal into a lump. And now I think you'd have to do this in layers because it's only going to get so hot. Right? And, and that's also why I think like it doesn't get too hot. Um, because there's always more, there was plastic in the very center to absorb the heat. Um, it, uh, it didn't burn at all. Um, well, this didn't burn at all, but, um, plastic, I don't think, I'm kind of getting into guesswork here, so please, you know, don't yell at me, but I feel like, um, the plastic won't burn if there's more plastic to absorb that heat. As it heats up, you know, it's going to be sharing its heat with, like, the rest of the plastic. Now, I mean, the outside could burn, but, like, I think this could be balanced, right? So you get, you make yourself a solar oven and, I don't know, read it for a couple of days. Make sure it doesn't go too much above, like, 350 degrees or something like that. So you have this oven, and it's only gets that hot for, like, an hour out of the day. That would be amazing, Right? Because that's the thing with solar ovens, is like you really kind of got like a small window. It's just like how solar only works for like a limited length of time. Like 
when the sun is like at its peak or something. Um, and you can position mirrors or you can cover up mirrors to get like like the actual temperature that you need. I, um, I need to learn more about solar ovens, but I believe that's how they work. So if you, if you have this out and about, uh, what I'm saying is like, I, th I think the plastic would kind of take care of the rest. So I don't really know if you would be burning it. Um, maybe if the same one was heating up too hot and it, this, like maybe the outer edges would burn. I, I don't know. But I think you could do it without burning it. But what would happen is it would seal over. And then like a compost pile, you just add in more bits. And then that'll heat down and the outside layer will, will like, you know, seal over and then it smashes in the plastic. And then you add more bits and, and then you build it up over time. It wouldn't be perfect, but these, these layers could be heated up over and over and over again. As long as they're not getting too hot. I, I felt like the plastic does degrade in heat. Um, the more times you heat it up, the more it degrades. However, if you're really precise with your temperatures, like something I learned, you can melt it again and again and again, um, or at least a good number of times. So the solar oven would have to be like more on the safe side, you know, not not like how I experiment. Here is your reminder. Alexa, shut up. <laughs> oh, uh, reminder. Anyway, um, so my thinking is that you could build up big things of plastic layer, because that's exactly how I made this. I just kind of added more layers and then I flipped it over, but I don't even think that's necessary. And you could build it up like a compost pile. And then once you have a big block, you take it to the workshop and you turn it into whatever you want. No moving parts. Y you know? Like, the solar ovens only get so hot if, 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 if you dial it correctly. Anyway, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm repeating myself at this point. <sighs> These are my dreams. This is what I would do if I had Elon Musk money. Um, <laughs> I would build a solar-powered uh, wind recycle, but cycler. Uh, but here's the thing: like, imagine if you had like this setup. You know, I don't think it would really be all that expensive. And then you would have an endless stream of like chain or whatever it is you're making, or giant blocks to to work in in a wood shop. Um, wouldn't that be great, you know? And without using any, like, without increasing your, your electric bill. Although heating um, here doesn't really seem to be all that uh, expensive. Um, I, I've monitored uh, heat when recycle or the electricity when recycling. And I don't know, maybe it's because we're Texas. <laughs> uh, it's not really a super heavy draw. Uh, but if you're making, like, giant blocks you know, that probably would be a lot of energy. So you might as well just let the sun do it, like, every day. And wouldn't it be great if you just had this, like, slowly grinding the plastic down? So all you had to do, all you had to do was throw your milk jugs and laundry detergent bottles in the top, and then it filtered down um, into a little, a little solar oven. Uh... And then every, like, once a month, you come out there and you've got this giant block that you can turn into a piece of furniture or something. I mean, this is solid. This is solid. I should have grabbed a hammer. Anyway, I'll shut up. Uh, thank you for hearing my dreams. Um, recycling's a lie. <laughs>